Hi, I'm Julie Johnson with Firebox Training. Today I'm going to show you how to create a basic Oracle ADF application. This is on 11G Release 2. We're going to work with a very simple table called our employee table. And let's just create a new application. We'll make this a Fusion web application. So we have two projects that will be created for us eventually. The application package prefix is the name of the package that any generated Java classes will belong to. And here's our model. These are the technologies being pulled into our model. I don't need to rename anything. I'll just stick with the defaults. And same thing with the controller, the view controller. These are the technologies being pulled in. I'll just hit next. Default package is com.fireboxtraining.view. I'll go ahead and hit finish. Okay, let me kill this window here. Next thing I'm going to do is right click on my model. I need to create a business component. So we'll say new ADF business components and I'll say business components from tables and let's create a connection. So my connection is based on the HR schema and I'm going to go ahead and save the password so I don't have to provide it all the time. And my Oracle SID is actually ORCL. Let me test the connection. That's successful. We hit OK. Hit OK again. And now we can query our available tables. Here's my employees table. And I actually want to call my employee entity object employee EO. We'll hit next. Make that available as an updatable view object. And as far as read-only or query-based view objects, uh, I am going to include a read-only departments view. So I'll call this departments read-only. The reason why we're generating this is for the drop-downs, um, the drop-down lists that will be generated. So we'll do the same thing for jobs and employees. And now we'll hit next. We add all of that to our application module. Hit next and then finish. Now the next thing I want to do is take a look at our application module. Really the only top level view object I want to include is the employees EO view. And then we'll use those read-onlys for the generated drop-downs, which I'll show you how to configure in just a minute. Okay, so now that we have that, we're going to go to our employees view object. This one right here, employee EO view. We go to our Java, whoops, I meant to say query. We go to our query. What I'd like to do is order by last name and then first name. And I'd like to do the same sort of thing for our other view. So here's my query for department. Order by department name. Here's our jobs. Order by job title. And the employee read only. We're going to order by last name and first name save everything. Now let's go to our, let me just close others here. So we just have our employee EO view. This is the view object that's based on the entity object. I'm going to go to my attributes. Here's my department ID. What I'd like to do is provide a list of values instead of displaying by default an input text for the department. What I'd like to do is have a drop down. What I mean by this is if I right click on my application module and run it, you'll see that we have here our employee view and you'll see that the department ID is showing up here. Okay, we really want that to be a drop down. Okay, so to do that we go to our department ID here, we go to the list of values and we say, you know what, our list data source is our department read only. See how they're joined together? And the Unique identifier is the department ID for that. And this is how they're joined together. Let's go to our UI hints. What I want to appear in the dropdown is our department name. Whoops, actually let, let me just grab department name. 
and then hit OK. I'll do the same sort of thing for my job ID, list of values, let's add to here, jobs read only, job ID right, goes right there, UI hints, choice list, let's have job title show up in the drop down. Now job ID is required and that's why we're not including a no selection item in the drop down. Okay, now let's go to our manager. Let's find our read only, employees read only. You see how they're joined together where manager ID equals employee ID. User interface hints. We can go ahead and bring over the first name as well as the last name. And we can include a no selection item. If we want, we can make this a labeled item and just say no manager like that. Let's save this. Now let's test this. So we right click on our app module to test it. And you'll see that we now have a drop down. And look what appears in here. This is blank for the department, but when we look at our managers, let's take a look here, no manager shows up. And so for job ID right here, okay. So we know that that's working. Let's go ahead and create a page that uses this. We'll just create a page that contains a form. So we'll right click on web content and say new JSF facelets page. For right now I'll create just a JSP XML and we'll call this EMP form. We'll make this a blank page. And if you expand your data controls, you can see that whatever is in your application module data model appears in your data controls. Okay, so all we're going to do here is take this view, create an ADF form, include navigation controls. I'm not going to bother with the user modified or last changed. Those are fields that I added on my own. You don't have those. Okay, I'm also going to include a submit button and then hit OK. Now the last thing I want to do is provide a way for the end user to save any changes. And so you'll see that under data controls in here, we have operations that belong to the application module. Okay, so we have commit and rollback. And so I want to associate the commit operation with this submit button right here. So I just drag it onto here. Okay, if I want to change the title, I can do that. All I need to do is highlight this right in here. I go to my properties and then for text I can do that. Okay, so I'm going to save this now and finally we can go ahead and run our page. Awesome, here's our employee ID, our first name, last name, and so on. Here we have the drop downs. So for the department ID, if we want to change Ellen Abel's department to corporate tax, we can do that. Now you'll see that the save changes is grayed out. The reason why it's grayed out is that we didn't make it aware of any changes being made in here. So let me show you how to make that change. Here's my save changes button. I'm looking for the property called partial triggers. Here it is right in here. And I want it to be aware of any changes that have taken place in the panel form layout. Now the other thing I want to do is implement auto submit for all of these guys right in here. So if I highlight all of these and I set auto submit to true, then it will do an automatic partial submit. So we right click and run and we'll check out our application again. Now another thing that you might want to do is provide some kind of way for new employees to uh, have their primary key auto generated, but we're not adding that functionality in this video tutorial.
and our application is loading right now and let's take a look. Okay, looking good. If I want to change the department ID here to corporate tax, I can, you see it's now enabled. I can go ahead and save my changes. I can now go to the next record, sales representative. I can change it to anything I want. I can change the manager if I want. If I go back to the first record, you'll see that it's still at corporate tax. Well, I hope you got a lot out of this video tutorial. Please visit our website at www.fireboxtraining.com.